Yo, what's going on guys? Hope everyone had a fantastic week. This video, concept video this week, and we're gonna talk about some basic intuition behind pointers. If you're using or learning C or C++, you have to, 100% have to understand how pointers work, but it's not so much a deal breaker if you're using some other languages where they do a lot of stuff for you. But I would recommend that if you really want to understand some of the subtleties and some of the nuances behind how things work, you do have to understand pointers and memory. All right, with that said, I know a lot of people that are watching have a wide range of backgrounds in this stuff, so I'm not gonna go over nitty gritty details, not gonna go over any coding syntax in this video about pointers. It's gonna be an intuition video, and hopefully by the end of it, we'll have a better understanding of what they are and why we need them. All right, so basic overview, intuition. Hope you guys like it, and let's get started. Really quickly, just a really, really fast recap on RAM, random access memory. We know that all our digital devices rely on this. Your phone has some memory, right? Your computer has some memory. When you're not using a lot of it, things are going really smoothly. When you've used a lot of your RAM, that's when shit hits the fan and stuff just doesn't work. Anyways, a lot of the things we use is very memory centric and if you need a refresher, just watch my RAM video from like three, a long time ago. I look a lot younger in this video, but check out the RAM video for a refresher if you just want a refresher on what memory is or what RAM is, and let's just move on from there. To start off, I just think that we need to conceptualize what memory really is. Like when you see memory, you just see like four gigabytes free, but what does that really mean, all right? So we kind of need this like mental picture of what memory kind of looks like. And once we have this mental picture, we're gonna start working on top of that. If you imagine that we just landed on earth and we discovered this huge space of land, it's just a huge open space of land, and this is gonna represent our memory, all right? And what are we gonna do with this space? The first thing we're gonna do is divide it up evenly so everything is fair and we're gonna divide it by these one foot by one foot chunks. So somebody takes a piece of chalk and we're gonna divide the whole piece of land, this huge space, by one square foot chunks, just to make everything even. So the size doesn't matter as much, right? There's no real reason. I just picked one foot by one foot completely arbitrarily. What's most important is that we divide up this land equally. All right, so it's not important that it's one square foot. What's actually more important is that whatever we divide it up as, it's equal. So we have this huge piece of land, it's stretching beyond what the eyes can see, and I'm gonna take this piece of chalk and just divide it up one square foot at a time. The next thing we have to do is that once every single little space is divided up in our big stretch of land, we're gonna label it from zero to one million. We're just gonna label them. I just picked 1 million randomly, but what we've done so far is we started with a huge piece of land, we divided each space equally, and I took my chalk and I labeled it from zero to 1 million. Why exactly do we have to assign numbers to all these spaces? Like, why do we have to label it zero to 1 million? Is that, why do we even need to do that? Well, let's just think about it for example. Like, how would you direct me to a space somewhere? Would you say something like, hey, go over to that space on the left and then go up a little bit? Or would you just say, go to space 9,000? The number 9,000 in this example is actually called a memory address. This number, 9,000, is the address of one little square in our piece of land, all right? The number 9,000 is not a pointer yet, all right? We're gonna get to pointers later, but this number 9,000 is just a memory address and a pointer is gonna store memory addresses, but more on that coming up. Okay, so we're gonna use this land for whatever we want, okay? If I wanna store um, like my t-shirt somewhere, I might use one little space of the land. If I wanna build a shack, I'll use a thousand spaces. If I wanna build a house, I'll use 10,000 spaces. If my friend comes along and he wants to build his own house, we'll let him build it somewhere else and give him 10,000 spaces, but we have a million, right? So there's a lot of them. Whatever we end up putting in this space, whether it's a t-shirt, it's a shack, it's a house, it's a mansion, it all has to go
go somewhere, right? It all has to have a special address. So I'm going to put my house at space 9,000 because I like the number 9,000 and I'm going to take up space there at 9,000. If my friend comes along and he wants to build his own house, I'm going to tell him, you do that at space 500,000. All right, so my house is over here, his house is over there. They both take up a lot of space, but they occupy different addresses. What's gonna happen now is that I need to remember where my friend's house is, all right? It's that address 500,000 or whatever, but I need a way to remember this because I'm gonna forget. What I'm gonna do in this scenario is that I'm gonna take a small piece of paper and write 500,000 on it which is actually the value, the address of my friend's house, right? But I'm just gonna write it on this small piece of paper and I'm gonna put it somewhere else on the land. I'm just gonna put it at another address, let's say 1,000. That piece of paper is essentially what a pointer is. The formal definition of a pointer is a variable that stores the memory address of another variable. So this variable, the pointer, is my piece of paper and it's storing the address of another variable, which is my friend's house at 500,000. So one of the trickiest parts that I think people have a tough time grasping is that a pointer itself is a variable, all right? And you have to kind of decouple that idea from memory addressing, all right? A pointer is a variable just like your house is a variable. A pointer is just really small and that house is probably really big. All right, so these are the kind of things that you have to keep really straight in your head, all right? Every single variable in all of computing has two things. Every single variable has a value and an address, all right? You have to keep those two things really clear. Every variable has a value and an address. Like we discussed before, a pointer itself is a variable, right? Its value is actually 500,000, which is the address of something else, but the pointer itself is still a variable, right? And it has its own address. We put it at 1,000. I could also take 1,000 and write that on a separate piece of paper and put it somewhere else, in which case I would actually have a pointer to a pointer. So every single pointer is a variable and every variable has an address. That's why you can do crazy things like a pointer to a pointer, to a pointer, to a pointer, and the chain can be actually infinite if you really want it to be. All right, guys, so after writing the script and doing this video, I realized that even trying to conceptualize the pointers and all this stuff with this whole land, it's a little difficult to do. So what I also decided to do is that I'm just gonna leave you guys with three questions that are kind of hopefully, if you think about these questions, you'll kind of get a better understanding of why we need pointers. All right, first question. What if you just come to me and you're like, Dave, I want to build a house. How am I going to respond to that? I could either say, okay, Joe, just go in the back and back over to the right a little bit and you can use like a medium sized space of land. That's kind of a bullshit answer, right? The real answer I would respond with is probably like, okay, Joe, you can go to address uh, 5,000 and you got 10,000 spaces to use. Second question, what if I had 1,000 spaces of really, really valuable information that a lot of people wanted? Let's just say, let's just say I stored the answers to the SATs at 1,000 spaces, all right? And hundreds of people are asking me for these answers, all right? I'm gonna be like, for every single one of those people, I'm gonna be like, all right, question one, answer is A. Question two, answer is B. Question three, answer is, I don't know that would be pretty outrageous, right? I wouldn't list off the answers to the SAT questions for every single person that asked me. I would just be like, for anyone that asked me, I'm just gonna give them a little piece of paper with the address to all those answers and they can go look it up themselves. And I'm not gonna tell them the answers to 1,000 questions for 1,000 people. All right, last question to think about. Imagine you're just a painter and you're gonna paint 500 houses or I'm gonna ask you to paint 500 houses. How would you best like to receive that information? All right guys, that's the end of the video. I would say the most important thing to remember to try to keep this idea straight is that a pointer itself is still a variable, all right? A pointer is still a variable and you have to really know how to distinguish what's a variable versus what's a memory address. Every single variable has its own address, including pointers.
Another thing I would want to say is that even if you're learning a language that doesn't require you to understand pointers, I would still take some time, read about it, and understand how pointers, memory, and references really work. So it'll help you understand how whatever language you're using behaves. All right, guys, that's the end of the video. Hope you enjoyed it. A little simplistic over a very complicated idea, but at the very least, maybe it just made you understand these concepts a little better. Uh, please leave me a comment if you have any more detailed questions and like the video as always. Thank you very much and I'll see everyone next time. All right, see you.